All right, folks, welcome back. This is going to be the algorithmic theory for price action model number four. And for this discussion, we're going to be using the euro dollar. This is a chart from barchart.com, the interactive chart. I have uploaded the chart showing the commitment of traders report, showing just commercials. And I did the hedging program based on this model. It looks back six months. And you can see, Market's been going lower, and we want to key off of the trend of this data. And we have been what? Bearish foreign currency, bullish dollar. Now, I'm going to counsel you to go back into model number four and think about where I was discussing. I think it was British pound versus U.S. dollar for the teaching, but go into month number five in the seasonal tendencies portion and you can go into the pdf file actually and just scroll through and get to the seasonal tendency for euro dollar and you will see that you have been holding in your hot little hands all this time all this time you've been holding it ict's been holding out he ain't doing these algorithmic theory videos he's uh he's kicking the can down the road. No, actually, and what I'm doing is <laughs> I'm waiting for everybody to get done. And now you're all charter members. So look at what I have given you already. I discussed how the seasonal tendencies are very strong. They repeat generally year in and year out. There are some subtle deviations from it, but by far and large, you'll see that they're pretty much roadmaps. Turn to the euro dollar, and if I will counsel you to pause this video, go get that study PDF from month five. Scrub through that PDF file until you get to euro dollar seasonal tendency, okay? And you'll see that in April, it tends to make a high and trade down into May. For those that have paused the video, you're now hearing me say, see, I told you so. And for those that didn't go look, you didn't do yourself any service there. Because it's exactly what I've been teaching you all this time. And here we have all the patterns and things that are underlyingly driven with price moving higher or lower. Obviously with the seasonal tendency with dollar index moving higher as we've been expecting the seasonal tendency for euro dollar in April should be expected to come to pass where it goes where? Lower. Okay. And here's that monthly chart for euro dollar. This is the month prior to, this is March 2022. And we're looking for this old low down here. If you go back and listen to the commentaries thus far in 2022, uh, we're in May of 2022 now, but. If you listen to what I was outlining and suggesting that we were going to see in euro dollar, we were looking for lower prices and gravitating towards what? Eventually that low. Okay. Now, what we're trying to do with this model, similar to what we've done in the price action model number three, is we're anticipating the monthly range to expand one direction or the other. Okay. So what direction are we expecting the next candle on the monthly chart to expand higher or lower? lower. It doesn't need to touch this level here yet, but we're just looking for an opportunity to see if it will give us that. As you can see, here we have the month of April delivering exactly as you would expect with the tools I've given you and runs to sell some liquidity. So let's take a deeper dive. Here is the daily chart. Okay. Now, again, what I'm doing is what I've counseled you all to do with the core content and the lessons. Take it, make it yours, simplify it. Don't try to do every possible thing in the world and apply every single tool or concept or idea to your model. You want to have it something very simple. Okay. Model number four, again, I've already taught it. You can go back through all the fine details and you can streamline it to something as simple as this. Okay. I'm using the approach I used with the YouTube model, which is our model number 13. 
you're looking for model number 13 on the form now. <laughs> it's not there yet. We got to get through these algorithmic theory principles and then I'll revisit this YouTube model with the perspective that you would expect in mentorship. All right, so we have the old high here. And I mentioned how we had three drives higher, okay, or three Indians pattern as it's taught in the Street Smarts book by Linda Rashke and Larry Connors. Um, it's just basically a, a, a stop run here and then one more stop run and then gives up the ghost and goes lower. Go back and listen to the commentaries. We were looking for lower prices. It is what it is, all right? So what we're looking for in this model is we want to see an old high violated if we're bearish, which we were. We were bearish euro, bullish dollar. So as soon as that candle goes through old high, your eye goes to the order block opening price. You put a sell stop right there. You don't need to be in front of the charts, folks. OK, I know some of you still constantly email me. And yes, I'm frustrated <laughs> okay, because I've already taught this stuff. And it's like you want me to take you right to a specific video and a minute marker. I, I have too many videos. Obviously, you've seen that. I have too many minutes in all those videos to be able to remember exactly where I said what. I don't have a script, okay? I'm going through notes that keeps me on point, but I don't have a transcript where I said what, at what time, minute marker, what video, what year. I, I don't know, okay? But I do know you have this information, okay? So when we have the market rally through an old high, you want to be able to tr trade this short. Because you're a what? A position trader. You can't be in front of charts. ICT, I'm not able to be awake. Or I can't be oh, you know, away from my job. I just can't do it. Okay, but I want to participate. How can I do it without day trading? Without getting into these intraday charts? Okay, and still get handsome reward to risk. Okay, well, you can do that. But just know that you're not going to get a lot of these trades a year. But you can do very well over a long career. Or at least until you get to the point where you can day trade or do short term trading and use the intraday charts. But for those individuals that can't do it, this is what I taught in the core content. This is how I taught it to you for this model. The sell stop goes right at the opening price. The next candle here, it's opening up here, rallies, and then eventually comes down and hits the opening price of the up candle that took out the previous high. That selling on a stop. You're selling weakness and your stop goes right at that candle's high plus one. Okay, so right away you're using weakness to get you in and your stop loss goes right here. Don't worry about it. If it stops you, oh well, it's a losing trade. Just like anybody else would be taking a trade in intraday day trading or scalping. It's a loss. You're going to get them sometimes. Okay, don't be afraid of it. But the expectation is you want to be entering here on a short. It's on autopilot. Your stop sitting there waiting to get triggered in. So when the market drops down, instead of stopping you out of a long position, which you don't have, it's stopping you into a short position that you have yet to enter. And as soon as that fills, your stop becomes active up here. Okay, so you would put a, stop, a sell stop here with a protective buy stop at this candle's high. Once this breaks down, you got to have to have an alert to fill you. Well, not fill you, but to bring you up to speed that you, you were filled and your stop has to be maintained at that high and you wait for price to break down and you're aiming for this low. Okay, that's that old monthly low. But this model refers to SMT diversions and also uses offset distribution for your targeting. So with that, we're ringing in correlated pair SMT, which is we're trading euro, its sister is pound is pound making a higher high like it does here in euro no so that's a bearish smt divergence so we have smp behind us which is what this model calls for so back into the daily chart on euro dollar our stop loss here is 1.11850 pipettes the entry is 1.10865 pipettes so there's your risk now some of you are saying man that's huge well, you scale it to that way if you're risking 2%, okay, your 2% would be divided up based on your equity and then how many pips that is. And that tells you how much leverage you use when you're going short for a hypothetical paper trade, okay? So what you're doing then is you're looking for price to trade down below this low 
and waiting for a short term low after it takes out that low, which is what we get right here. What is offset distribution? Offset distribution is finding that low and then waiting for the price to go down below it once more. Okay. So what you're doing is, is you're running down equity. You're getting more juice out of this lemon when it breaks that short term low because people are going to see this as a low and try to buy it and sell stocks will accumulate under there. So the algorithm does this pausing or slightly retracement, then it attacks those sell stops that were not there prior. Okay. They cleared out the lows here, but then they engineered new sell stops below this low with this consolidation and small little retracement. Then when it drops down one more time, you're going to be targeting that short term price low because that's your offset distribution low here. So below this level, you want to be targeting your cover. You don't know when this low forms until it starts to break below that low and you wait and you observe. Now you can use the four hour chart for your offset distribution as well. You don't necessarily have to have the daily chart, but the daily chart is going to give you the best bang for buck. So using this entire model in theory, using it algorithmically, it's bullish dollar, bearish foreign currency, Using seasonal intensity, April, look at your seasonal intensity for your dollar. It's exactly what you're seeing here, folks, right out of that page that I gave you. Those are treasure maps, folks. OK, they're treasure maps. These things are so uncanny how they can pan out, but you have to wait for them. OK. It's like Christmas time. Everybody wants to get that gift. But can you get that gift in March? No. Can you get it in October? No. You have to wait. For what? You got to wait for the season of giving. That's Christmas. So these seasonal tendencies are just like that. These are seasons when you anticipate a certain gift by the market. If you limit yourself to trading in these times of the year where the seasonal tendencies are so overwhelmingly obvious, you could do yourself such a huge service and avoid driving yourself mad because there's lots of times when it's going to look like there's something there and seasonally it's probably not likely to do what you think is going to happen but it, you can see obviously we've been bullish on dollar so that's bearish on euro euro starts april creates that one more little higher high then drops takes out the old monthly low you can take a partial there you can take a partial as it's running down in here. And then as it creates that short term low, you anticipate that run right below that. So what's below that 1.04 big figure. So we could target that big figure, which would be offset distribution, likely to draw to 1.04 level anyway. And if that's the case, what you're looking at here is seven to one R multiple. So for every $1 you risked, you made seven and it only took about a month or so, a month and a half or thereabouts to get it. So if you're not taking parcels and you're aiming just for your target. So using this idea, you could be t taking basically 14% out of this move if you're risking 2%. So one trade, you're risking 2% and made 14%. Folks, that's like half of a fund manager's year. All you need to do is find one more just like that, and you beat most of the fund managers in the, in the planet. So if you're aiming for that type of career where you want to be a fund manager and you want to have a really easy life, <laughs> not do a whole lot, trade with these seasonal tendencies, okay, and look for these types of ideas to build your own model. And you'll see that these things repeat a lot. They're not exactly perfect. They're not going to be always the case. Because if that's the case, we would all be billionaires. But obviously, you've known about this. You've had it in your hands. It's in your possession. I tell you all the time, spring and fall. Those two seasons of the year is where you really want to work hard. Don't work so hard in January. Don't work so hard in December. And in the middle of the year, around mm, July and August, scale back how much you try to trade. 
because that's the doldrums of summer. And it's between the both peak seasons of spring and fall where the markets are really, really easy. So if you found this one insightful, I'll talk to you next time. Be safe.